Your Life in Sex Island, Chapter 3, Our Credit Card, Page 60. What do we know for sure? Monitoring equals corruption. Regulation equals corruption. Oversight equals corruption. And privatization equals corruption. All right then, smartass. How do you prevent murder, stealing, and stupidity? How do you prevent murder and stealing any other place or time? with cops. No, you don't prevent it. Well, maybe you can prevent some, but most of the time you punish it after it happens as a deterrent to like-minded pig's asses. And yes, it takes cops, and if you want to call that regulation, so be it. But, and the cops have to be policed also. Because if a business can save a million dollars by paying a cop a hundred grand, they sure as hell will do it. It is done all the time. It is de rigor. No question and no doubt. So the cops have to be well paid and they have to be rotated so they don't get friendly with management. They must somehow be aligned with the public interest. They must not be allowed to spend time with the corruptors. They must work at arm's length. And the criminal acts by the rich, which are now quite legal, must be made criminal. It is not fair to have only poor kids who committed petty crimes in jail while the major thieves spend the winter in Acapulco. When I worked for DuPont in Circleville, Ohio, I ran the contractors for a couple of years. This was at a plant that had, at the time, I believe about 2,000 employees, and they had many acres under roof, a flat roof that was loaded with equipment, work crews, and machinery, so we spent many thousands of dollars on roofing repair each year. When I first took the job, the roofing contractor foreman offered me a bribe, which I turned down. A couple of days later, the contractor owner came in and said he was embarrassed about how small the consideration of appreciation was, and he could understand how I could be offended and turn it down. He made a more appropriate offer. I turned that down too. He made it clear that all of the previous engineers that he had worked with had taken the offer. I turned him down and found a new roofing contractor. I informed my boss what had happened. My boss gave me one of the most ignorant lectures that I have ever heard. The implication seemed to be that I was pretty stupid not to make a buck when I had the chance and no one would be hurt. He must have been on the take. Too. At an earlier time at that plant, when I didn't pad my expense account, another of my supervisors there was completely disgusted with me. I was spoiling the system. You need to learn to take care of yourself, he said. Bribery, kickbacks, and the like corruption are endemic. They are systemic. They are universal. Corporations understand it little, or maybe they do, and that's the way they want it. Corporations make almost no effort to prevent or stop it. Corruption, after all, is rampant at the top. I could tell dozens of stories where I personally know it was going on and dozens more of which I was told it was going on. Professional liars rule the day. Honest guys rule the day. Corporations do not want someone around who is incorruptible. That is dangerous. What else might they do? Honesty cannot trump loyalty and self-interest. The corrupt live in that shining city on the hill. The resistors live in Mildew Valley. Yesterday, the president, that was Bush, signed the 700 billion bailout of the crooks for the crooks and by the crooks. The crooks who cooked the books about mortgages. Seven hundred billion dollars. With our time travel machine, it is now November 13, 2008. Secretary Paulson has now pissed away about 350 billion of the 700 billion that we gave him. Squandered it on the Troubled Asset Relief Program, TARP. The Troubled Asset Relief Program reminds me of the Holy Roman Catholic Church. 
the Holy Roman Catholic Church is not holy, it is not Roman, it is not Catholic. The Troubled Asset Relief Program is not assets, it is not relief, and it is not a program. Paulson has, he says, changed his mind about buying more toxic assets. If it were Dr. Frankenstein changing his, Paulson's mind, and replacing it with that of a higher primate, we might have some hope. If we replaced a troubled toxic asset such as his mind, one could be excused for rejoicing that happy days are here again. Paulson says that he will not apologize for changing his mind when conditions have changed. But conditions have not changed, except that he now has half of the assets that he had when he began. He's half assets. But other conditions have not changed. He has made no progress. He has given $350 billion to thieves. The economy is still unzipping at the same rate. The zipper is slightly more open. The rich are richer. The poor are poorer. To Paulson, that's progress. But Paulson has expressed a desire to throw the program into reverse. He intends, he says, to allow more credit card debt, more auto loan debt, and more student debt. Someone should whisper in his ear after getting his attention with a two by four that it was too much debt to begin with that got us into this mess. He also intends to spend 250 billion. To spend is what a drunken sailor does when blinded by the red lights reflecting off firm nipples. He, Paulson, is going to buy stock in troubled banks with our money. Really? Honest? We, us taxpayers, will now own bankrupt banks. That's Republican progress. They should be outraged. They would be outraged if someone suggested that we nationalize the oil companies and made a few trillion, but they are all smiles when we nationalize failed banks so they can take their money and run, leaving us with the shells. Now travel back to late September or early October 2008. Our son Paul has a house on Bainbridge Island, west across Elliott Bay from Seattle, the northwest corner of the country. Our son Kevin has several properties in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, the southeast corner of the country. All the properties of both sons are in financial trouble. Both sons attempted to talk to their banks. The banks won't and can't talk to them about the contracts because the banks sold the contracts. How is that legal? Well, we have to stop here. We'll come back, but we have to stop for now. Please purchase the book, Your Life in Sex Island, by clicking on the link in the description below. Thank you for watching.